Good morning, grandkids. This is your new, uh, uh, I named her Granny Shirls. That's going to be reading books to you in this new bookshelf series. Um, of course, she's back in the house in Rifton because the modders who are making me a character for Skyrim SE also made a mod for me to put in the sub-basement of this house, which is a library with all the books in it, because I was tired of taking her out between recordings and uh, hunting for books or buying books or going through caves to get books or stealing books. I didn't want to play out in the game. I just wanted to read. So they made me a mod to put down in a sub-basement, which we shall go see because that's all I'm going to be doing in this bookshelf series so I haven't furnished my house of course when I was able to buy the house the the Jarl gave me a person to be steward of the house <laughs> so she just sits there <laughs> she doesn't have anything to be a steward of sometimes she sits there so let's go down in the basement it's not furnished either there's no reason to furnish any of this i don't have any money i'm not going to go out and be making any money so i can't furnish anything anyway so and here is the sub basement that they the modders put in for me it's the only thing that's furnished And this is my downstairs library. There's some books laying out here. There's a chair to sit in back here. Some books laying out back here. All of these are bookshelves, but there's only, uh, each one of them is the same. Uh, whether I open this one or the next one or the next one. They all have all the books alphabetically in them. Now, I think some of the books, like, some of them might have one in a series missing. Well, like, look at this one. It says volume two, volume seven, volume 56 of Songs of the Return. I don't know if there's really supposed to be that many volumes or if that's just the ones that's available in Skyrim. I don't know. And first of all, I wanted to ask you a question. And you let me know in the comments what you think. I'm going to be reading individual books. But some of them, like, like this one. I've never read any of those books. Should I read a series, like one after the other? And The Wolf Queen, I've never read any of those books. Should I read that series, one after the other? Like, look there, volume one isn't even there, nor six. What I'm assuming is that uh, they might be in some of the books that's laying out on the tables. I don't know. So, hey, I had left a book laying here on this table that I was going to start with. It's not there. I hope that's not going to happen too often. We go over here and see if it's back in the bookshelf. I don't even remember which one it was, actually. Amongst the Draugr, I think, was the one I was going to read. Let me see. I'll take it and look at it. Yeah, this is the one I was going to read. All right, let's see if I can go over there and lay it down on the table. 
it'll probably fall. It'll. There used there was originally some plates and some food and a cup sitting on the table, but the first time I laid a book down on the table, they fell off and they turned upside down and they fell over and I tried to put them all back right and all they do is go upside down. So I just took them all off. They're probably in my inventory. Anyway, let's put this book on the table. I guess I'll have to drop it first because it won't go on the table. That's for sure. Pick it up. Whoa, whoa. All right, now stay there, please. And I will try to sit down in my chair. And we shall read amongst the Draugr. It's by Bernadette Bentuan, Benton. And she was evidently in the College of Winterhold. Maybe she was a mage. It wasn't until my seventh month with the creatures that they seemed to accept me. Well, accept isn't really the proper word, but they seemed to have decided that I posed no threat to them, and gradually they ceased their attacks. Though more than capable of fending them off, a combination of fire and turning spells are generally sufficient. I admit that I tired of having to be ever vigilant in their presence. I'll never know whether there was some sort of agreement communicated among them, for the only utterances they make seem to be in that heathen tongue that I can't even pronounce, much less describe. In time, I learned more of their intentions toward me from their general movements and tone rather than specific words. Hostility in any creature is easily read, but in these most peculiar of the living dead, with such variations in gait and speed, what amounts to a hostile charge in one may simply be casual movement in another. The eyes seem to be key to their intent, and I will confess to more than one dream haunted by the glowing pinpoints in the darkness. I had always wondered why the ancient priests of the dragon cult insisted that their followers be buried with them. It seems the height of pagan vanity to drag your conscripts to their death along with you, but as I integrated into their presence, I began to observe the reasons. Every day, a different set of draugr would awaken shamble their way to the sarcophagus of their priest and prostrate themselves before it. Let me back up there. <laughs> and prostrate themselves before it. Several hours of this, followed by a meticulous cleaning of the area, it would appear that the adherents of the dragon priest continue their worship of him in death which would also explain the ferocity with which they defend his chambers. It took several weeks before I felt comfortable approaching the dragon priest's resting place myself, inch by inch, <laughs> until the snarling draugr around me seemed to tire of fending off my timid presence. I was able to set some simple scrying spells around the tomb, that I might get a sense of what magical energies resided there. When the next group of Draugr came to pay homage to the priest, I noted a sort of transferal happening, a distinct flow of life force between the adherents and the master. 
it was here that I finally understood the dragon cult's notion of resurrection. The second eternal life was only promised to those who ascended to the priesthood, but the lesser functionaries contributed their life force to sustaining them for eternity. I don't know what sort of eternal wellspring they draw from, but it's clear that each draugr carries only the barest whisper of life in it and rekindles it nightly while resting in its niche. I know, I now believe that the grotesque forms that we see in the barrows were, in fact, buried fully as men and women, and only over the thousands of years that have passed withered into the wretched things we know. If we had visited a barrow directly after its construction, we might not even have known any of its inhabitants were dead. Well, that's interesting. These discoveries and extrapolations excite me, and my mind aches to return to the barrows. I have only paused here at the college to transcribe these notes and gather further supplies for a more extended stay. My new hope is to learn some rudimentary way of speaking to them for imagining what they could tell us of the early mists of time is staggering. Well, wow, grandkids, wouldn't that be interesting if she goes back and finds some of this stuff she wants to learn and goes back to the college and writes another book? But I don't think there is one. But this, I thought this was really interesting. I would have never thought of any of those things any of the times that I was in the tomb. Well, how do I get out of here? I want to see Granny Shirley. I think this, I think I named this series Granny Shirley's. Granny Sheryl's bookshelf. Sheryl's was used to be my nickname. So this is your new granny reading out of all those books that the modders made for me. So thank you very much for coming by and if you want to be read to again sometimes stop by and we'll read another book. Bye bye grandkids. <laughs>